So, if you guys are familiar with Kelly Linux, then you definitely know this screen, or at least some variation of this screen. However, you probably wouldn't believe me if I told you this is all in like a little touchscreen device. And I mean, it might take multiple videos, but I'm going to show you guys how to make this. All it basically is is just a Raspberry Pi, which I'm sure you've seen before. I know that shouldn't have slammed against the table, but oh well. And a display. This is actually their official display with a custom case. And the biggest thing is all the installations of the Kali and how I got it to operate with this current setup. So right now I have it currently updating. Actually just finished and failed on something. So I'll go ahead and get that fixed. But um, right here, if you see, there's a virtual keyboard. If you press on that, it'll open this up. With this, you can then expand and now you have a full traditional keyboard if I bring this down right over here so you can see it down there and now I'll go up to here and we'll even just see if we can't minimize this there we go or at least get it to where we can see the keyboard you know alright now a couple things, we'll just go ahead and see, and that won't even test that honestly. Right now I am, yeah, yeah we'll do that. Some of those aren't even, just kind of just messing with some stuff trying to figure out how to get this to work, because a lot of this you have to realize is, I haven't really specifically seen another video, you know, making a device specifically like this, so everything kind of is uniquely coded so as you'll see throughout this process it's been a process but honestly at this point with my tutorial it should only take you guys about like an hour at the most but let's get started I'll show you program real quick actually here is Airgeddon Airgeddon is cool because Airgeddon would allow me to do like a man in the middle attack meaning you're connected to one network, correct? And um, basically what I do is um, de-auth you so you get disconnected from your network. Not only that, but I pretend to be your network after the fact, meaning you connect to mine. You know, your computer doesn't know the difference between your network and my network. So let me go ahead and just continue with this. All right, upon reviewing the footage, I just noticed I didn't explain why you'd want to do that you know, you know, give them your internet connection. Basically what you're doing, even though you're serving them web pages, you're also stealing their input. So any packets they send as far as, you know, anything coming from them or coming from the web server is being transmitted through you. So I'm seeing everything. And those are called packets. Basically I'm spying on each one and kind of seeing, you know, if I could find a credit card or some user information. That's what a hacker would be doing. Uh, and then also, I didn't explain the packets as far as the deauthentication. Um, I'm still a little bit new at this. I'm still a student as far as cybersecurity. But um, what I do know about deauthentication is it runs off the management frame protocol, which is you know one layer of the um, packet that's not encrypted. We do know the internet packets are encrypted, obviously, right? But that's part of it that is not encrypted. And since it's not encrypted, you can easily kick it off. And the reason that's not encrypted is because if you think about it, you have a public key and a private key. Your public key needs to be public and needs to be unencrypted in order to, you know, start the communication process. So that's kind of how everything works. It's just a matter of finding vulnerabilities and the frameworks that already exist. And that's exactly what this is taking advantage of. And I'm really honestly just kind of showing you the main script just so you can kind of see how, you know, powerful this is. It says it's missing one package, but honestly on the Raspberry Pi, it's, um, the package is missing is called Beef, and they kind of discontinued support for Beef, so. And everything on this one I had to kind of manually install because even this script wouldn't install on the Raspberry Pi for some reason there was some sort of permission issues. Like I said, it's been a little bit of a process, but it all was done and 
I'm so proud of this thing. This thing is crazy. It's got four gigabytes of RAM. It's, you know, 64 gigabytes. And look, right here, right here. Evil Twin Attacks, WPS Attacks, DOS Menu, which is kind of funny if you realize how cheap, you know, a DDoS tool is, like a stressor online. Which, by the way, that's be a future topic if you ever wanted to hypothetically kick off your own network since that's all we really pen test on. That's the thing you would use. You wouldn't just use one single denial of service. But anyway, this is actually a deauthor board in itself. And I can put a link for this one too in the description. Um, I mean, it does the same thing that this thing does, but just the one action. And the reason I would recommend getting one of these, if you're going to even, I mean, if you're going to go on the venture and make one of these, you're already spending some money. So might as well spend like an extra 25 bucks, 30 bucks. I think this was on Amazon. Basically what this does is allows you to press one button with this, you know, console disabling the network. And then all you have to do to set up the evil twin now is select evil twin. I mean, cause all you're doing is just set up, up the secondary network. Your DAW already done. You don't need to do it on this device. So as you can see, it's already scanned. I'm just gonna go over here, select access points. I mean, I don't want to do anybody else's. And mine are hidden, so I mean, I really can't show you guys that right now. I mean, not that it wouldn't work on a hidden network, but there's two, and I'm not sure which one the other one is. So <laughs> don't want to. In an effort of avoid breaking the law, I'm not going to do that. But let's get started.